how has my life changed from becoming a father? Um, really, when I first uh, came, became aware I was going to be a dad with my partner, um, not only for me, but for my partner, it was really, it changed our mindset right then and there, you know, because the baby's growing inside the mother and with me. I uh, always had it in my head, you know, like, oh, I'm going to be a dad. It was a, it was a really proud feeling. Uh, mixed emotions, too. Kind of, you're, um, you, you just want to do your best because you're going to be a new parent, a new father. And with that being said, I was motivated, actually. I guess uh, everybody else would have their total uh, different um, approach or how they would take the news like that or... You know, everybody's different, got their own motives and and all that. My motive was I'm going to be a dad. So I was more or less focused on, you know, fatherhood things and like learning. I know my partner had bought a couple books on uh, parenting. So I read read a few chapters and there's a couple chapters about fatherhood during that book I was reading. So that was a really good insight too on that. But, uh. Up until the due date of uh, my first child, you know, it was, I was nervous. I was really nervous. Then as soon as you go to the hospital, then, you know, it's labor time, you know, okay, you know, it's time. You're going to have a, a kid that's going to come into the world now. So with that, you get so many mixed emotions. Like you go through so much, like you get real nervous, you get real excited, but you get real protective and like, I don't know, it's 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 a crazy experience and everybody goes through it different in their own way. But for me, I was just like a big ball of emotions. Like I didn't want to look nervous in front of my partner because she was delivering and I had to be that strong uh, man partner for her. So I, I, I kind of hid my emotions a little bit, but that's me. Everybody's different. But once, once that uh, child was born, oh my God, I was just so happy and like, I just felt the love already and that connection with my child. It was, it's a great experience. And still, like, after I had my child, I was really headstrong and motive just to provide uh, a good role model, fatherhood role model for, for my child and to be there and, and to also be there for my partner too. So, you know, we keep that balance of, you know, uh, parenthood. But, uh, like I said, it's uh, you're gonna go through some emotions, and how you deal with it is upon you. And uh, I think just kind of you just buy into it, and you always talk to your partner and keep that balance, and everything will go all right. Uh, to touch back on uh, when I when I had mentioned about um, the parenting books that my partner had bought, and I was reading a. A uh, few chapters or pages, whatever was in there. To be honest, there's not really much in there at, for fatherhood. There's not really much out there. So, you know, some of the stuff I had questions asked or anything like that, I would, you know, I would look it up online too. Or I would, you know, reach out to other fathers, really, that I've that are close in age or older than me that I've known. You know, just ask questions. Like it never hurts to uh, ask questions, and because they're giving their knowledge of it to you to help you be a great parent. You know, so with that being said, you know, there's not a whole lot out there like fatherhood books or anything like that. So just by communicating or you know even looking online, if you have a question or whatever, that that's always good. Or there possibly might be a program out there for f fatherhood. You know, so keep your eyes open. But uh, I will, from my experience, it's never don't be afraid to ask questions to another father or father figure, you know, because uh, they're going to give you great feedback and you just take that in and use it as uh, as a tool for your own self to be a good parent. Uh, how do I deal with stress as a father? Um well, it really depends uh, on the certain types of stresses in a way. If um if I get stressed out with being at home where the kids are acting all crazy and excited and running around, and it can be overwhelming at times. But I, I find, you know, 
I talk to my partner really is the biggest thing, the communication with uh, your partner to deal with a stress you may be going through. And mine is to, you know, talk about it. It's either with my partner or I can talk to, you know, say my parents or my buddies, you know, you know, just to kind of get it off your chest. You know, I think communication is very big. And uh, another, another um, to deal with stress is, you know, in the everyday world, not only just the home life of your kids, like uh, me and my partner, what we like to do is, you know, have our own space at times. And with my partner, her, her, her time, what we call it, is she'll like to, she likes to bead and do leather work. So with that, you know, I'll go, you know, I'll wash the kids up or, you know, lay the kids down for their bedtime. And my partner will be like, okay, well, I'm gonna go downstairs and get started on some beading projects or work on some leather. I'm like, okay, I, you know, I got it from here, you know, do what you gotta do, enjoy your time. And with me, I, with me, uh, my time, me is, um, I like going to the gym, you know, go work out, you know, or, or I like to go hunting or fishing. We're in hunting season now, so with me going hunting, that's kind of my release of, release of stresses or whatever through everyday life or in the household, you know. It's all about that balance, and I feel like communicating and talking to one another really helps and keeps that balance and, you know, keep that good good um communication alive between you and your partner so every i know everybody's different and got their own ways to deal with it but that's that's just coming from me and what i do and uh those really work for me because it keeps me grounded and connected to to myself my partner and my kids and to culturally culturally connected too by going out in the woods and going hunting for deer and go fishing for fish and you know, even going to the gym and going for a run or whatever, working out, that's that's my way of having my time to get released from stress. So, yeah, like I said, everybody else has got their own way of doing it, and that's just a few of mine. Um, yeah, um, culture, the culture aspect of teaching your children. Um, yeah, with my children, I know that I only know a few stories, you know, about Sky Woman and the twins. And uh, I'll tell them about that. Then also with uh, the Haudenosaunee, we have five nations, well, six. Um, I usually tell my son or my kids about it, like uh, what each nation, each nation as name is and kind of like the, how Mohawks are the people of Flint and Onondagas are the keepers of fires, you know, stuff like that. Then also with the whole <clears throat> clan system, on, like I'm Wolf Clan and my children, they're turtle clan, so uh, kind of a systematic like this a little bit, you know, they're just young, they're still learning, and heck, I'm still learning, there's so much out there, but um, with me, to keep my kid right now kind of culturally connected, he loves to play sports that involve our culture, which is lacrosse, he loves lacrosse so much, he's got plenty of sticks, he's always outside shooting on the net, you know, even hockey, Ho hockey is part of our culture too, like playing on old pond and our people used to use like uh, a stick that was there and I and I've heard they use like a hockey puck out of like old horse poo or, you know kind of you know how it all started back in back in uh, the day there but uh yeah um and like I said I'm still learning my kids are learning and you know I feel that keeping your kids culture connected is just by communicating them and letting them know uh, what teachings that you know as a parent and you can pass down to your child. Mm -hmm.